Brian, thanks for joining me in my shop once again. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I think this is going to be fun for me, for sure. Because what I'm going to be working on next is the kind of stuff that really uh, catches my interest. And uh, so this radio is essentially working now. Magic Eyes fixed. Uh, it seems to be receiving quite fine. In fact, it's receiving so fine, it's receiving something it shouldn't be receiving. A phantom signal right in the middle of the short wave band, which showed up. Uh, in the very end of the last video as I was testing the radio. It's a very strong signal. Um, unmodulated. So we're going to investigate what this is. Could be a simple matter of just realigning the radio. I kind of don't think so, but I don't really know for sure. And I'm hoping to really identify exactly why this exists in the radio. And, and the reason I want to do this is because it's a great opportunity to learn a bunch of stuff. That's the way I see it. I've uh, never really poked deeply into anything like this before. I've never had such an excellent example of it before. So uh, so that's what we're going to do. And the interesting thing too is now that the magic eye is working, I'm able to use that as the signal strength indicator. It's just as good as any of my instruments or meters. In fact, maybe even better. It's connected exactly the way I would connect one of my uh, meters for measuring the AVC voltage. That's basically what is operating the uh, magic eye. So we just have to watch the magic eye. I don't even, even have to hook up any meters uh, to the radio. Very cool. It's a big payoff for making the magic eye work. So let's replicate uh, what it was I found uh, last time I operated the radio. So, okay, I've got the speaker plugged in. The antenna here is connected to nothing. The signal generator is running, but it's not connected to the radio. And the radio is in the short wave band. I think we're pretty much ready to go here. Okay. Well, why don't we get this camera, the other camera set up too? Get that done. It's going to be sitting here right in front. Trying to keep it level. And we're going to get a real close look at it. <laughs> That's pretty close. I'll just take the fuzz away now. It's kind of like being at the, uh, I guess is what the eye doctor does. Eh? He kind of kind of looks through the lens at the back of your eye. And you can kind of get it like that. Let me just go a little closer. Well, that's a little too close, eh? <laughs> Some kind of cyclops on your screen there. Okay, let's just double check the focus. Okay, enough of that. I'm fascinated by what I'm seeing on the screen here. Now, if you can just... Okay, so I think we're ready to switch everything on. I think I got all the stuff ready to go here. So let's supply the... Just one last little safety check. Volume down. There we go. Here, let's watch the eye now. See how well my camera picks it up. There it comes. Now we're on uh, restricted supply voltage. Those bands you are seeing uh, are actually in the, they're not in effect of the camera. I can see them with my eye too. A little bit of volume here. Ooh. Oh, maybe we're right on that uh, spot. Mr. Radio, what's the matter? 
Oh, I have no, nothing connected to the antenna. That's not going to help. See the uh, tuning wheel turning just underneath the eye here. Very neat. So that's what we want to find out. What the heck is that? So the, I think what I'm going to try to do is uh, place on top of this, if you like, the signal from the signal generator, and I'll be able to figure out just what the frequency is that we're where this is happening. one end of the short wave band about 15 or 20 percent into it. I'm not sure the short wave band without the face I can't remember but I think it was from 6 to 18. So we got to get up to... So here we are. Now I'm going to have to pump a pretty heavy signal into that I would imagine um, to overcome or to show up. In, in the face of this gigantic internal signal. So maybe this won't work. But let's just scan through here and listen to what happens. Well, that certainly worked. on the eye. Fourteen two something here. Whoops. Trying to stop my uh, signal gener uh, my uh, frequency counter from jumping, but I can't. So it's somewhere around 14.2. 14.2. So the next thing I want to try, I'll turn this off here. And get another radio. So I happen to have one. try to do is pick up that same 14.2 only on this radio. Aaron set herself the task of trying to understand what it was that Eichmann had done to place the ghastly events of the Holocaust, the man himself, and what he had to say in some kind of... 14.2. Blasting out a signal at 14.2. What is it about 14.2? Hmm. 
what would it be about 14.2? If, if I tune off, does it disappear? Oh my gosh, it did. There's a bunch of them here, isn't there? my signal generator going by there. Tricky to tune this guy, boy. Working good though, it's picking stuff up without he really being connected to a proper antenna. Okay, so it starts quieting down. Right in here. You can see the uh, start of it there. And on the other side. Get this noisy area. Then it goes quiet. As you reach the very end of the band, which might be. I got the volume up full now, so everybody watch out. Very quiet at the top. There's the noise. Then we get that. Go past it. signal generator, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, other than me being fascinated by, <laughs> by tuning back and forth through this thing, I'm not learning too much more about it. So, 14.2. 14, 14 Probably doesn't really mean anything in itself. Oscillation's got to be coming. Well, I have no idea where it might be in, this, in the radio. Frankly, there's nothing like this on the AM band. It's only one frequency. Everything that should be oscillating must be oscillating or the radio wouldn't work. So the oscillator itself must be oscillating at the proper frequency. And this is an additional oscillation. So that means the circuits that control the local oscillator are probably okay in themselves and are not a source of this problem. So I can probably eliminate those. Not necessarily, but uh, now it's very broad. It's very, very wide band effect. Um, we don't have the scale on there, but this is a very, very scrunched up band spread on this radio. So, um, pretty certainly, uh, it's two me two megahertz wide. That's really, really wide. So my guess would be then. And I know you can't really see that, can you? There it is. <laughs> If I hold it up here, it might come through. Yeah, there we are. So my guess here would be it's not going to be any of this stuff. It's not going to be early in the in the early IF because the tuning would be sharper and you wouldn't get this very broadband effect. So my guess is the oscillation is here in somewhere in the detector circuitry itself. That's my guess. Now, on this radio, you can't pull any tubes out. The radio doesn't work without all its tubes. You can't pull a tube out and do that. I can uh, put shorts on grids and things like that. So I can 
and snuff the signal out here and there to see what's happening. That sounds like a pretty good approach. Now this signal cannot be in the audio circuits either because it's affecting the AVC very strongly. So my, my bet again is that it's in the AVC circuits. There's one, two, three, um, three capacitors in there. Um, one's a bypass capacitor. Bypassing a cathode resistor that goes to the detector tube. And I guess the other one would be called a bypass also, but it doesn't bypass the ground. Oh, you know, in effect, it would bypass the ground. So there's a couple of capacitors there. That, I don't know. Let's try uh, and see if we can't sort of poke around and make it come and go and figure out what circuits it is that are oscillating. Because if we disturb the right circuits, the oscillation will go away or it will change. Something like that. So I want to tip the radio up on its side, but I don't think I want it on while I'm doing this. Oh, I had that on restricted voltage the whole time, too. So let me get it set up for our next round here. Okay, so we're ready to try our little experiment here with uh, the radio. Let's put on the power. Now this time, if you're going to watch the eye, you'll, you'll have to use, you'll have to look with this camera. Um, if I see that it's not working well, I'll, I can move the camera up a bit, but I can't get too much closer with this camera. It's got no focus, basically. And uh, as I poke around, We'll, we'll, we'll look with this camera and see what, uh, see, you know what, you know, the second thought of it would be probably a lot better for you would be to look with that. It's a little bit confusing there, but uh, here, this will kind of, <laughs> we don't find that too disturbing. There's some kind of weird thing here. But anyway, we can, you can look with two cameras. And if you cross your eyes, you might really, you might, might have some kind of LSD effect. So, okay, so there's the eye. Yeah, you can see that pretty clearly. So I'll tune it to the spot where that problem is. Well, it's right there. It's a little hard for you to see it, I know that, but if you look close. So it's closed now. And uh, what am I going to poke around with? A nice poker here. Use my favorite screwdriver at this point, but it seems to have gone missing. Hmm. Okay, I'll poke around with this. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to be contacting uh, different circuit points and watching what happens to this. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to really. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to switch these cameras around be helpful to me too. I'm kind of using the wrong camera for the wrong thing. Okay, so I swapped around the cameras, which makes a lot more sense. And uh, this will help me too, because I can actually look up on my computer screen and, and watch the eye that way. Here we go. So nothing there. something a little better to poke with. That's a little better. And I'm doing this rather randomly. <laughs> no particular rhyme or reason just in case it turns out to be easy. Let's, well, let's put a little bit of reason into it. I don't want it quite so out there. So, uh, hmm. we would want to be kind of targeting the second IF. The IF coils are down in this area, back in here. Very awkward for me to see. Isn't that interesting? 
adjuster right there. It's just a little lower than you can see here. There. And there's an adjustment down here. The part I really love to be touching is buried under all this. I mean, I can't even see it. Oh, man. This is not going to work out, I don't think. You know, just touching it with a screwdriver may not be enough to disturb the circuit. Um, hey, let's think about this. There has to be a coil involved. Wouldn't there have to be a coil involved in this? So all i got to do is just mess around with all the coils a little bit. I can stick my finger on them or a piece of metal up against them. And, and and I should see a reaction. So hey, now that's a much, much better idea. I like that idea. Let's try that. Give me a bigger hunk of metal here too. Something a little more substantial. I've got too many screwdrivers to choose from. That's my problem. So we'll try this. I'm sure these are the oscillator coils. Well, I think they're there. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm so busy watching the screwdriver, I can't look at the eye. I don't see anything there. The coils up here. Up here. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Woo. Okay, let's try that again. Now, this could be either changing this oscillation, or it could be just weakening the radio. What I'm doing here. And, uh, okay, it's actually increasing the signal by doing this. It's not weakening it. Here, watch. Away. Up against it. So oh, maybe this, maybe let, let's tune this exactly now. No, that's maxed. About there. Right? Let's go in for the kill on this. Just one second, and I'll refocus here. Doing. There we go. I got too excited. Uh, my head won't work right. Well. <laughs> okay. You we weren't supposed to say not much difference in that. About, about my head working. Okay, here we go. over here. You can see the coil I'm fooling around with. Okay, and maybe I just leave it a little out of focus here. I don't think there's too much I can do about that. But you can clearly see with the coils I'm fooling with. Okay, now, so there's a coil here. That makes a bit of a difference. Again, increasing it coil here, same thing, the coil here, this one seems to weaken it, so this whole area is a little suspicious, didn't I change that capacitor there, now that capacitor is just a capacitor on the antenna input, so the antenna wire comes in, connects to the far side of this capacitor, and then this side heads off into the radio. This uh, potentially is radiating the signal. Well, let's move the antenna around. Is the antenna part of the deal here? Well, a little bit. Eh? You see a little bit of movement. That's me squeezing the bundle of antenna wire. 
just make absolutely sure I'm not on the frequency generator making a fool of myself. No, frequency generator is not involved in this. Okay, so I got pretty excited about uh, finding a coil that reacted. Now, the first mistake would be to not continue checking other coils because I got too excited. So. coils. Well, those would be the IF coils. They could be implicated in this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just try to disturb those a little bit. And of course, I if I disturb the IF itself, I would change the uh, what the eye is showing us, uh, nothing to do with the oscillation, I'm just changing the strength or capability of the radio, so this could be cool, but well, that's interesting, eh? This one I tap on, it's a little clicky. But nothing is happening to the eye. Nothing at all, okay. Now that wasn't a 100% check, I mean, I'm just tapping on the screws on uh, what I think are capacitors. Let me just check here. Um, the IFs. Yes, those are variable capacitors at the top of the IF cans. I'm really not, I'm really not doing what I said I should do, which is mess up those coils. Now they're hidden inside those, the IF cans, so very purposefully I cannot do much more than that. Oh, look at that. Okay, now that was pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. On the outside, not much action. Go down the inside of this. Bumping into some wires in there or something. Or uh, what's happening is I'm turning that's the ABC cranking up the uh, radio. So I've, I've eliminated the tone, but maybe it's just moved. So let's go hunting. I'll leave the screwdriver in there. Let me just lay it down here. There we go. Now I'm going to tune the radio, and we'll, we'll see if we can uh, yeah, see it seems to be here now. So I'll peek it right there. Pull the screwdriver out and see now if there's an even higher peak somewhere. Yeah, a little bit. So what's that? What's that tower? It's really indicating that it's something to do with those coils. Now to get an oscillation like that, you have to have some kind of feedback. Coils just don't oscillate on their own. They they need some kind of a uh, a booster and some kind of feedback system that uh, overcomes the loss of energy from just the uh, oscillations themselves damping down in the, in the circuit. So there has to be a tube involved. So let's see, and hey, another easy thing is just uh, let's just touch the tops of some tubes. And how about this one here? This this one might be implicated. You know what? Oh. <laughs> Close your ears. Look at that. Look at that show you what I'm doing here so you can look at it. <laughs> look at what you can't see. One second, I just put the camera in place. Okay. Yeah. That light's in the way. Okay, here we go. Here's what I'm touching. Okay, so I'll 
I'll put my screwdriver on there. Actually, this is an awl. I'll put the awl on there. And we'll see if there's another. See, I think it's moved it, eh? Now it's over here. So if I tune. Okay, so I'll take the awl off. Well, I'm really zeroing in on it, aren't I? I would say. Since no one's here to congratulate me, I have to take care of those things myself. So, although, listen, I do appreciate the uh, kind comments I receive from so many of you who watch my videos. Uh, it's all very encouraging. So. so, we're looking at the grid of that tube. And that tube is the... That's the 6A7. That's the first tube in the radio. And it performs the mixer function. So it's a pentagrid, pentagrid converter. It would probably be the name of this tube, tube type. So it is taking in the oscillator signal. And it's taking in the antenna signal. That uh, click you just heard was my fridge switching on. So with it, uh, yeah, I'm gonna think about this a little bit. About what to do next? Now, everyone, look into your camera. I mean, look into your screen. Look into your screen. There you go.